Hi guys, buckle in because we're in for a doozy. Today I'm sitting on this side of the screen because I'm going to be putting up a lot of receipts and screenshots. Also, I want to show off my flowers. Uh, <laughs> I want to display my flowers while they're still fresh. It's kind of like this unspoken YouTube thing that everyone does, like have this flower bouquet background item. I don't know, but I'm doing it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. I love interacting with you guys. I do investigative and analytical videos like this. I also do like less serious stuff um, about beauty, fashion, jewelry, accessories, just random DIY things. And I also recently started vlogging. So let me know what you think about that. I know that a lot of you here are from my Chanel unboxing video where I got my first Chanel, my black square mini in the lambskin. And as you may know, I got it from a reseller from Hong Kong. They're very highly rated and that was for a couple of reasons. One being that the mini squares in black are really hard to find. And two, the price was just a little bit better than getting it straight from a boutique here in Australia. We get designer stuff so marked up here. Like even if you buy it from the US or Europe, I mean, I guess we can't do that now because we can't travel. But yeah, we get really, really ripped off here in Australia. The prices are insane. And also, it was a gift for my significant other. And as some of you may know, Chanel doesn't ship in Australia. I don't know if Chanel ships um, in the rest of the world, but they don't ship here in Australia. So it would be a bit weird for me to like go and buy my own gift at a Chanel boutique. So I found this seller Coco Approved because I was watching a Chani Day video and I guess he was sponsored by them. And he got his girlfriend a Chanel bag off there and it looked pretty good. And then I researched them further and found that they, like out of all the resellers, they pretty much are the most consistently reputable seller. So I felt comfortable going with him. But anyway, today's video is not really about my bag or my bag experience, but rather about the reseller market in general. When I was looking for my square mini, because like, you know, my significant other doesn't really know much about uh, bags or Chanel bags. So I had to do the research and I was happy to do that. Like I find this very interesting. On my search for my Chanel Square Mini, I joined this Facebook group called CLE, Chanel Lovers Exclusive. I found them through the purse forum and so this is just specifically for Chanel, like a group about Chanel. And today I saw this post that I just had to make a video about. Just as a sort of disclaimer here, I'm not going to be naming anyone in this video because everything here is alleged, but I just felt it was necessary to share this information for anyone else who's on the secondhand market and looking to buy, especially if you're a bit newer to the game like I am. But if you're actively looking to buy or you're just curious and really want to know who it is, you can DM me on Instagram at Sally in Wonderland and I'll let you know. Also, feel free to drop me a follow. So here is the post. I'll just let you have a read of it. At the time of filming, I'm pretty sure the post is deleted or I can't find it anymore. So I'm going back to my screenshots. It is a bit of a controversial post and the seller in question is pretty well known. So I don't know if there's some like more drama going on behind the scenes, but here is the information we have so far. The story goes, there's this luxury reseller located in Australia who's pretty well known. Like they have a lot of followers on their Instagram page. This post has said that she's bought bags from her in the past and recently they had a falling out over one bag. Like, I don't know the situation behind that. She said she asked about the seller in one of the groups and a lady approached her, a lady PM'd her and said that she should get the bags checked because the bag she bought from the seller was re-dyed. So the first lady contacts leather surgeons and they say that they suspect that one of the bags was refinished in the past. Now, the definition of refinished is questionable. I mean, refinished sounds pretty ambiguous, right? But if you look in the comments, someone who's an admin of this Chanel Lovers group says she thinks she knows who the seller is and when the seller says spa treated, she doesn't mean cleaned and conditioned, she means dyed. I first came across the concept of re-dyed Chanel bags when I was looking at the Coco Approved website, and I noticed that one of the black square minis was noticeably cheaper than all the other ones, including my one. And in the notes, it said that it was actually originally a yellow bag that's been re-dyed or repainted black. So that's why it was cheaper. The comments go on to ask OP if she's talked to her about it and she said that she blocked her. There's also comments on it kind of like hinting at 
is it this person? Is it this person? And everyone kind of mentioned the same person. Some people question if the spa treatment was just the partial redying of the worn out parts of old bags. And I guess they were trying to differentiate if it was dyeing the bag a completely different color or if it was just touching up the corners. And this other lady chimed in and said that she bought a bag that she knew was purchased originally from this Australian seller, this well-known Australian seller. And it turned out that it was dyed and never disclosed. And she said that she's heard this happening several times from the same seller, which is really concerning. Some people are saying whether it's a lack of ethics or transparency, and other people are kind of like playing devil's advocate or like trying to see the best in people, I guess, and saying maybe she didn't know. But one comment did stand out to me. She said that in the world of reselling luxury bags, this reseller must have knowledge about authentication and if the bags were re dyed or not. I mean, maybe the average customer wouldn't know, but if you're a reseller, I mean, I kind of agree that you would be able to tell. Like, if you've been reselling for a long time and you handle these bags on a regular basis daily, you should be able to tell. And this other lady mentioned that when she was new to the pre love market, she also bought a bag from this seller and it was really overpriced. That was something I did notice too. So when I first kind of started my search, I followed a bunch of resellers just to kind of see what they have and check out their stuff. And I noticed that just like, just in comparison to the person I bought from Coco Approved, this seller's stuff was definitely more expensive. By this point, I had a pretty good idea who it was because there's not a lot of um, Australian resellers, like huge Australian resellers of Chanel. But I commented anyway, asking if someone could DM me her name. And sure enough, someone messaged me and confirmed that it was who I thought it was. She did add that she personally never had a bad experience with her, but um, but yeah, this is who everyone is talking about. What do you guys think about this? I guess the quality of it depends on who did it and how good their work was. Even so, even if their work is really good, repainting a Chanel bag I think voids the authenticity. I'm still struggling with that word. Authen authenticity. Okay, so apparently even if you have a Chanel bag repaired by someone who's not um, an authorized Chanel repairer, it voids the authenticity. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out that repainting the whole bag will void the authenticity. It's my assumption that people re-dye these Chanel bags because they might be in an unpopular or not in demand color, such as yellow, and they probably re-dye it black or something because that is the most popular color and the most classic color. But yeah, like, what do you think about this whole re-dyeing issue? Do you think it's okay because the base bag is still an authentic Chanel? Or do you think it's immoral and unethical? Or even an outright scam? Me, personally, I would be very upset if that happened to me. And the truth is, with a lot of these resellers there's really not a lot of recourses to get your money back unless you paid by paper i think going forwards if i were to buy from the pre-love market again that's what i'm going to go with especially if it's from another seller so with the original poster i think there's not much recourse for her because she purchased her bags i think it says like up to three years ago three years is too long for you to do anything about it and even with credit cards and stuff too much time has passed. PayPal has a refund period of six months. If more time has lapsed since then, there's really not much you can do. This honestly makes me feel a bit sick that there are these popular resellers out there who could be doing things like this. I mean, everything is allegedly, like it's what people are saying. But I kind of think that if different people are sort of saying the same thing and having the same experiences, there's usually at least some truth to it. But it's kind of really scary knowing that these popular resellers are doing shady things like this on the down low. If this video helped you, please give me a like and comment down below if you've had an experience like this or if you know more about the situation because I feel like there's a lot of things that aren't uncovered in that thread and I would be really interested in knowing more about this because I find this fascinating. This is some detective drama stuff so yeah. It's not like there aren't fake sellers out there, like there's a lot of sellers who sell fake Chanel or fake luxury bags. It's just that in this case they're passing it off as an authentic at authentic prices, at inflated authentic prices because this seller actually charges more than market price. I mean these bags aren't fake, the base bag isn't fake. 
fake. But I think re-dyeing it and not disclosing pretty much makes it a fake, right? Not to mention re-dyeing it and then having the audacity to sell it for higher than market price. I know that in general, for peace of mind and also having all the little accessories and stuff that comes with buying a bag from a boutique, and also ensuring that your bag is actually brand new, um, it's definitely better to buy from a boutique, but sometimes that's not possible. Whether it's because the bag you're after is not in stock, um, or you weren't able to get your hands on one, or it's not available in your country, or maybe you're after an older edition that's no longer sold. So sometimes it is necessary to buy from the secondhand market. I definitely think that it's good to have as much information as possible so you can make an as informed decision as possible when making such a big purchase. I mean, this isn't small amounts of money. You're transferring a lot of money essentially to a stranger. Check out my other videos, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!